We love it. Reviewers hate it. Feminists die over it. But whether anyone likes it or not, we should agree that harem has become a stable genre among the anime community. But since I've already done a top 20 video summarizing the best harem anime this time, I decided to do something related to a specific niche. That's right, it's about the overpowered main character with barely any character development. So strap in your seatbelts and put on your harem glasses. There are no best girls here because in a harem, everyone is best girl. First, take a look at the posters. Yeah, take a look at all of them. Everything, just every poster. Now, should I repeat the plot for you? Probably not. Either this is peak writing that can rival the works of Charles Dickens and William Shakespeare, or this is trashy enough to make actual trash look like a luxury meal in heaven from God. But come on, we know when trash turns good, right? That's why we all watched Aero Manga Sensei or Domestic Girlfriend. Don't even lie, I know you watched it. Triage X is the perfect Mongo Bay production in anime. You've got lots and lots of and then lots and lots of <laughs> And in the end, it's about the overall perverse enjoyment you gained from the show rather than the time you took to make sense of its plot. So if you need trash, then go watch The Good Trash because Triage X can also be called Good Trash Triple X. If you have watched a harem anime at least once, you've already noticed some of the popular tropes in the genre such as lots and lots of girls, unimaginable coincidences, doors that are never locked, and last but not least, a main character who doesn't have control of his hand. Like seriously, how do they manage to pull this off every time? Does Princess Lover have all of this? Hell yeah! It does, but this anime has the potential to become something much better. I mean, we have this dude who gets to replace his sweet old grandpa and become the head of the household. What's better is the offer comes in with an arranged marriage. Great! But is the girl nice. I would want to know that. But since this is a harem anime, you should know by now that the marriage doesn't go well. Ooh, that's not good. Compared to other anime of the genre, Princess Lover has a great premise that once again starts with the famous lines, Oh, I'm so sorry, but I don't know how my hand got there. Ha 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 ha. Marry me. And manages to keep that harem tension throughout the show. But the sad thing is, the anime also has the potential to be something so much more. I'm so disappointed. But then the writers must have been like, hey bro, guess what bro, what bro? This is a harem anime, we don't need a plot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make sure a cliche is not a cliche. By not making it a cliche, duh. Well, not really. You have to make sure that the cliche is openly recognized as a cliche. Remember those visual novel decision flags that turn the tide of the story after a certain choice the player has to make? Yes, ladies and gentlemen. If her flag breaks is about a boy who can stop or change certain scenarios by seeing the flag on the person's head. <laughs> That's right. So the next time you walk on the street and see a red flag on an innocent isekai protagonist, you can push him away, jump into the truck, and say, Hell nah! I'm the one getting isekai today, bro, not you. <laughs> the good thing about If Her Flag Breaks is how it uses the harem only as a sub-element and mainly focuses on the flags. So it's kind of like flag football, but that's where the similarities end. This way you have a decently good story that solely doesn't rely on how many girls the main character earns at the end of the anime. Overpowered? Check. Mecha? Check. Lots of girls? Check. A central tragedy that is forgotten in order to give the main female cast more screen time? Check. Wait a minute, this is like the better version of Infinite Stratos. Except this time our main character isn't dumb as a doorknob. Thank you lord. From the outside, 100 is your generic mecha harem show where one boy goes to a magical mecha school, fights some one dimensional evil robots who openly admit that they are there for the sake of the plot, and then gets the girl and lives happily ever after without getting a second season. <laughs> so sad. But is also good because it fits all boxes perfectly. Why do you ask? I'll explain. We have a great shonen main character. We have a harem that starts with every writer's good old technique, the freaking love triangle. And to top it all off, we've also got some great visuals. What more do you need?
Just because you saw the word Machiavellian in the title, don't go expecting a political plot with genius main characters who then proceed to take part in a high school version of Game of Thrones. Instead, go to see this anime expecting the good old one boy many girls, and I don't know why the hell I'm watching this thing formula. But I need to give credit to the main character. He's one of those cool bad boys you see in high school who can jump out from a school building and survive the fall without a broken foot and really defy reality. But that's why we watch anime, folks. From the first episode itself, you can see there is some overarching mystery in the story. And then you're left to wonder how all of this is unraveled. And even though it unravels very badly, you can still see how the main character adds girls to his collection faster than you collected toilet paper during the lockdown. Ha 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 don't think I don't know you did that. If you felt bored while watching Record of Ragnarok and thought, I need a less serious version of this with more myths and less fighting, then fret not because Val X Love has got your back or your front. I'll leave that for you to judge. This time we have Norse mythology mixing in because watching Marvel's Thor isn't enough for us Norse fans. You need to give Thor his own harem. Just like every harem title that has the letter X in it, this show starts in true harem fashion where one overpowered main character has to live with nine Valkyrie warriors in the same house. Val X Love hasn't been received very well by critics. Okay. Hey, I'll be honest, critics hate it. But as long as you go watch this show expecting nothing serious, then this will definitely be an enjoyable ride. I recently did a video about anime where the main character is forced into a relationship, and since I couldn't add that anime there, I'll add this one here. So here you go! That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Conception. Oh, I love that word. Look at how beautiful a name it has. From the name itself, it feels like a well-directed Christopher Nolan movie. But in truth, it's about one overpowered harem main character trying to save the world by turning this anime into a hentai. Of all the anime in this list, I think Conception is something that went too far. It's like the rocket that you planned to send to the moon traveled to a whole new orbit and caused a nuclear explosion in space that triggered the aliens hiding in Area 51 to go, Hey guys, look at the explosion! because this anime's 4.62 score on my anime list site tells us something. Remember, remember, this is the site that gave School Days a 5.62, so when the score of an anime is even lower than that, you can call this a failed anime masterpiece or a successful anime failure. Once again, it is up to you to judge. <laughs> If this anime was about plumbing, I would make many more plumbing jokes and it would make a whole lot more sense because this main character acts a lot like a plumber. I mean, at least in a metaphorical way. He gets beaten a lot, gets rejected a lot, and even his best friend punches him in the face. That's rude. But that's all until this brave warrior removes his mask. As he removes his mask, he becomes a knight in shining armor who doesn't shine at all, but still kicks the asses of every bad guy in the show while keeping a serious face and I love it. Overall, Plunderer feels like it was written by a guy who has a multiple personality disorder, but I have to admit it, it has a very nice setting to it. You got these numbers tattooed on each person's skin, and when the count goes below zero, Satan calls you down to hell to have a nice and sweet happy kids meal. It's kind of sad to see how this story doesn't focus too much on that setting and try to expand the lore, but in terms of overpowered harems, this is definitely one of the good ones out there. I wonder why these girls in overpowered harem anime always challenge the main character to a fight. Cause like seriously, you're gonna lose. Don't you girls know this is a power fantasy anime where the main character has a bigger plot armor than Jon Snow? But no, just go right away and fight him in the first episode and then slowly get seduced by this charming overpowered generic main character and his oozing amounts of testosterone. I always feel like this is an easy way to add girls to a harem. Japanese writers never fail to surprise me. Like seriously, I'm like, wow, how did you come up with that? There is a reason why Absolute Duo is labeled as Absolute Hatred by many viewers, I kind of liked it though, but that's just me. But we are not here for some actual plot, are we? You clicked this video because you needed to see some overpowered bastard hit on some girls both literally and figuratively, and then add them to his harem like collecting cotton candy. So go on, watch Absolute Duo, and don't come crying over to me if you expected something serious. I warned you! <laughs> Yes.
All right, I know, this is like the zillionth time I'm recommending this, but you know why. But as usual, rather than starting with the anime, I would suggest playing the first visual novel, watching the movie, and then going on to watch season two. This is one of the best harem anime out there. And even though the whole franchise has turned into a big fat cow the producers can use to milk money, the original trilogy of stories still retain its good harem quality. All the girls here, except for Yumiko, feel like pages torn out from the the guy to creating cliche anime characters, but our main boy here is on a whole new level. I mean, check it out. This guy deflects a knife with a hand and then sweet talks to the girl who tried to kill him. If that isn't badass, then I don't know what is.